Hello, this is Scott Eustis, Community Science Director for Healthy Golf, looking at environmental integrity projects, time-lapse monitor for fence line monitoring uh, for benzene around refineries on the Gulf Coast. I'm gonna pick on Phillips 66 in Westlake because it uh, shows some signals in the data on the, on the animation that represent some of our ongoing concerns namely the increase in pollution during hurricanes and the failure of monitoring during hurricanes, whether that's a loss of power, uh, a hurricane directly affecting the unit or corrupting the sample, destroying the sample, or just lack of staffing, the lack of staff to collect the samples. My understanding is that these benzene fence line monitors are canister samples that are collected uh, every two weeks Yes, every two weeks. So they shouldn't be affected by power outages the way that the laser samplers are. Um, but obviously storms mess up a lot of things, including just the ability of environmental staff to travel to the locations. Um, so uh, we have a lot of needs <laughs> for fence line monitoring. These are, this represents the best static effort. We'd like Louisiana to conduct a similar program for the hundreds of petrochemical facilities, um, you know, uh, uh, available. LDQ says it costs $5 million and 48 additional staff, and we're for that. <laughs> yes, that's pretty cheap compared to the cost of our health. But let's look at reasons why we need fence line monitoring, especially during hurricanes, uh, as we look at environmental integrity projects, um, display uh, of the EPA collected monitoring data. Um, oop. So hopefully you should see on the screen the um, Phillips 66 Lake Charles refinery and an array of yellow or orange dots uh, at the time slider below. We're looking at March, 2020 before Laura's landfall. And we notice that there is an elevated reading above three micrograms per cubic meter on the north side of the refinery, you know, adjacent to the um, disparately African-American area uh, north of Westlake, around Westlake High School, and um, you know other folks who are also living next to the Saisal plant. Um, so I'm going to click on the play button and just run the animation a couple of times. So that was March 2020 through 2022. I think we saw um, elevated measurements in certain areas um, above the short-term risk um, as recommended by the disease registry. And then we saw the lights blink out. Uh, and I recorded that without any commentary just so we could trim that out, but let's perhaps review that um, more closely to look at the impact of Hurricane Laura. And then there was also a spring event that was similar, right? There was an, some big numbers in the spring of 2021. Um, so this is the two week period before the hurricane and we saw a large reading above short-term risk, you know, this third category down by the water. Um, I step, it, step it to the next one. This is the period of landfall at Hurricane Laura. The sensors around this area are of concern. So there may be a need to look at what processes are close to those monitors. 
Um, so certainly Laura, uh, you know, Laura hits the coast, EPA or LDQ staff are able to retrieve the samples and they're elevated north, particularly north of the refinery, uh, i.e. away from in the path of the hurricane wind. All right, the next time step is blank from 31st August to the first couple of weeks of September. We have no data, which in this case doesn't indicate a loss of power because the sampling is not dependent upon electricity, but may indicate that the staff who would have retrieved the samples were evacuated. But it is concerning to us that in this very critical period after Laura in 2020, there was just no environmental readings uh, when we know that this is the time when facilities will declare force majeure, use emergency provisions and permits to, you know, exceed limits. And generally, this is the time of year, this is when they're polluting the most. So disturbing that we have no data. Afterwards, we have, again, uh, elevated readings around that eastern part of the refinery um, where we saw the um, exceedance of short-term risk levels um, immediately after the hurricane. So yeah, not fun. For a while after Laura, we're getting uh, levels that exceed Cal EPA's long-term risk levels. Again, a lot of that is focused on the eastern side of the refinery. So um, what's interesting is that this seems to be these exceedance of long-term risk levels is a chronic thing after Laura. And then we see in the early March period, uh, again, a problem. And perhaps this was a cold front, um, although the wind would be blowing to the south in that situation. But, you know, I'll have to see, you know, this period is now a period with a lot of tornado activity. It's a period of wake lows. Um, you know, this was when we had those high winds offshore that led to the um, the death of at least 13 crew members offshore of Porsche Pouchon. You know, so we're seeing that we have some spring extreme weather events as well. So I have to go back and see because I wasn't aware of problems, weather problems at this time, but we certainly see exceedance of short-term risk levels in spring of 2021 around the Phillips 66 Westlake plant. So that's about 10 minutes, which is a pretty long video. Um, so I'm gonna send this to our folks as an example of what, um, what we see when we're looking at the EPA benzene data, thanks to Environmental Integrity Project. Peace.